Welcome lovers, I don't know what I'm doing, but you probably already knew that, and welcome back to another Things That I Don't Understand video. Yay! The first thing that I'm going to talk about is people who like to call themselves a nice person when it's kind of irrelevant. Specifically, when somebody tells them they don't want to date them, or they don't want to have sex with them, or something like that, and then the person's immediate response to that, or when talking about it to other people, the first thing that they say is, oh, I'm just too nice. Or like, oh, but I'm, ni I'm a nice person. Or, oh, I'm a nice guy, nice guys finish last. Like, stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't get how people can say that and not understand not only how creepy it is, but how kind of rapey it is to say that kind of stuff. Like, it's stupid. To say that, first of all, because there is an endless amount of things that would make that person come to the conclusion of no thank you, but like that is such a creepy thing to say. I don't, I don't know if that's just me, but it really does seem like, okay, no, get away from me, that's oof. Ugh. So that's that one. But the next thing that I'd like to talk about is people who go up to someone who's ace and tell them that, oh, it's just a phase or oh you'll find the right person or you'll grow out of it or something like that and it's like it, no that's that's not how that works especially if they like go up to like a full-grown adult who is an ace and they're like oh you just haven't found the right person yet it's like I'm sorry do you know more about me than I do no no you don't I don't think so stop stop because for those of you who don't know, an ace person is someone who falls within the category of like a romantic or asexual or something of that sort. They don't have sexual attraction or they don't have romantic attraction or they have one but not the other or they don't have either or something in between. And I'm like, I don't understand how you can just go up to somebody, especially if you don't really know anything about them, and just be like, oh yeah, no, you'll obviously change your mind because everyone is the same. Everyone obviously functions the same way. You can't possibly be any different than I am. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's like somebody going up to you and, and you telling them, oh, I like this particular characteristic in my sexual partners, and then being like, oh, yeah, no you don't. It's, I don't like that, so you can't possibly like that. It's the same thing! Like, it... <clears throat> like, it doesn't make any sense to me how you could just go up to somebody and say something that's stupid, and think that it's not stupid. So <laughs> The next thing I'd like to talk about is something that I see very frequently on the internet, usually on Tumblr, and it's just really, really annoying, is I can understand people will sometimes self-diagnose themselves with something that they probably have, like depression, for instance. Depression is a really common one, and the symptoms are very obvious, and it's easy to tell who does and doesn't have it in the sense of like symptoms and so if somebody self-diagnoses themselves with depression because they have a lot of the symptoms and stuff like that then it's reasonable to think that they might actually have depression but what really really bothers me is people is people who, first of all, don't know anything about actual psychology and how people's minds work and the way mental illness actually functions, going around and f discovering, oh hey, look at all these really rare diseases that have that you have to have five or more of the main symptoms to even be considered to be diagnosed with them. I must have that thing. <laughs> like who? <sighs> Like, who are you to go and find, like, this rare-ass mental disorder, like, one in, like, a million has, and be like, oh, yeah, I totally have this thing, everybody, this is me, and it's like, you don't, <laughs> you don't know that. Oh, the reason that things like that are so rare to diagnose is because a lot of the times they can have the symptoms of other disorders that are more common, but they just have... A multitude of symptoms of a bunch of them with along with their own like of course you're gonna have some of the symptoms because a lot of different things have similar symptoms like you can't just go and self-diagnose yourself for something like that that's ridiculous and 
stupid and it's demeaning for the people who actually have that problem. Like, it, it's, mm, it just makes me so angry. Like, you can't just do that. <laughs> and yet so many people will go out and diagnose themselves with multiple things that, like, pretty much nobody actually has because it's really, really rare. And it, oh. <sighs> the next thing that I'd like to talk about is people who would is people who try to erase history by wanting to take down monuments. <sighs> monuments are there for a reason. Like, I get it. There are some monuments that what they represent is really shitty. But that just goes to show that that part of history happened. Like, monuments are there to remind us that this part of history happened. It was a thing. And maybe it's there to celebrate the victims of a situation, maybe it's there to celebrate the people who were horrible, maybe it was there to, s to celebrate the people who were awesome. But regardless, monuments are there to remind us that history happened. Because if we try to erase history, if we try to erase the bad things that happened because people are offended by it, it's just gonna happen again. History is there for a reason. We're supposed to learn from the, th from the mistakes we made before. So trying to hide it away and sweep it under the rug is not going to help anyone. Because if we don't fully understand what happened, we're never gonna learn from our mistakes. <laughs> so forgive me, but I cannot understand the, th the thought process behind wanting to take down monuments. I, j I can't. I, would, I really would love to have a conversation with somebody where they can explain to me what would make it a good idea to take the monuments down that would, you know, be a good argument against what I just said, but thus far nobody has been able to, and I, I, would, I would like to understand. <laughs> a lot of these things that I say here is just me getting ang angry at people being stupid, but I legitimately would like to understand the thought process in this particular one because it, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm like, I'm trying so hard not to be condescending, but I feel like it's coming off in a condescending manner. And I promise I don't mean it to, but I, I just, I, I would like to know. Anyways, the next thing that I'd like to talk about is people who don't understand the difference between apologizing and saying you're sorry. Because there is a difference. Saying you're sorry is saying I understand that a thing that I did was bad, was wrong, and I feel bad for doing said bad thing. I am sorry, I feel sorrow over this thing. So I'm letting you know I am sorry to you for this thing. Apologizing is when, is basically like, I understand that what I did or said or something like that made you feel bad. Or you feel like what I said or did was wrong or bad in some manner or another. I happen to disagree, or I think I was justified, or something like that. So instead of lying to you and telling you I feel sorry over it, I'm going to apologize for the fact that you feel bad for it. Because my intent was not to make you feel bad for it. Usually, sometimes the intent is to make you feel bad, because there are people like that, but there is a real difference between feeling sorry and just apologizing. Again, I don't know if this is one of those things that's just me, but those two things are just very different to me. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't get the people who don't, who don't see the difference in the two. The next thing I'd like to talk about is people who use the phrase, I don't know who you are anymore, or the person I knew would be this way, or the person I know would do this, and like think it's like this huge insult. And don't get me wrong, sometimes in the moment it can hurt. But like, that's so dumb. Cause people... <laughs> Cause first of all, that kind of language is extremely manipulative. I have never come across a person who has used one of those phrases or that type of language without being a shitty manipulative person. Like, <laughs> people who are decent people don't just say that shit. <laughs> On top of the fact that, how is that an insult? 
people constantly change and grow and sometimes traumatic things happen so you can't do things you used to be able to do anymore and people will still say these things because they don't understand oh you don't want to give me a hug after this person assaulted you oh well the person i knew like it i don't get how people can just say shit like that because like it's <clears throat> it's stupid it's manipulative it's downright cruel some of the time and it doesn't even make any sense because it <laughs> People don't exist for you. So when stuff changes and they grow as a person, of course they're gonna be different. And you pointing it out as if it's some big horrible thing to you is ridiculous. Like, ugh. That being said, let's go to the next thing. And the next thing is people, and this is a very personal one that's happened a lot recently, is people who go up and they're supposed to pick somebody up to go do something. So they go up and they honk repetitively to get that person's attention when they live in an apartment building. <laughs> like, <laughs> it could be really early in the morning or really late at night and you're just out there outside of apartment buildings where dozens of people live and you're just honking and honking and honking to try to get the attention of somebody and it's like it doesn't occur to them that other people live in these buildings and that not only are you really annoying a lot of people, but you're also pissing people off. Cause like people could be sleeping cause you don't know when people's jobs are. People could be getting the only bit of sleep they can because their work is during the rest of the hours of the night or the day. And it's just like, <laughs> You realize there could be people who are homesick and they're trying to get rest and you're just fucking honking away, disturbing everyone. This has happened so many times recently, like just outside and then just, the other day I literally went outside and said, shut up other people live here. <laughs> and it hasn't happened since. Mm. Like, how do, you, how do you not even think about that when you first show up to an apartment building and start honking? Like, <sighs> Next people I would like to talk about are the people who are constantly on their phones when they're at the gym. See, I can understand being at the gym and you're using the machine and like, you're listening to music on your phone so you pick it up and you change the song and you go back to it. Or like somebody texts you and it's something important so you pick it up, you text them back, you put it down, you go back to exercising. But what I really, really don't get, what really just cuts my potato, is when people are like sitting on a machine and they're just on their phone, not even using the machine. Like they'll, like they're on Facebook or something, like they'll do like a set of like four and then sit there for freaking 15 minutes, just on Facebook on their phone. And then somebody else would be like, hey, can I use this machine? And they'll be like, oh, I'm using it. And then put it down and use it again. But like, <laughs> Really? You're at a gym because you need to exercise. And you're just taking up a machine while other people need to use it. Other people who are actually exercising are trying to go from machine to machine doing their stuff and it's like, this is the last machine I need to use for my daily workout, can you please move? And <laughs> it's just, <clears throat> it's rude. It's just rude. And a lot of the time people, and for the people who will move out of the way, they'll just go and sit on another machine and do the same thing. And it's like, why are you even at the gym? <laughs> it's like, you could just stay home and do like push-ups or something and then go on Facebook while you're at home and not be in anyone's way. And the last group of people I'd like to talk about are people who don't think that grown adults can be adorable or cute. Cause like, <laughs> some of the cutest things I have ever seen have come from adults. And like, there are people like Lobo, for instance, sometimes he'll do things that are adorable. Like he'll go Meh, sometimes, like a little weird sound and then he'll like hide his face because like I'll be poking him in the face and it'll bother him and so he'll do that. And it is like the most adorable thing. Like it's really cute and like, I'll tell him that and he'll be like, I'm a man. 
And I'm like, so? so Who cares? Grown men, grown women, th you can be adorable. You can be cute. You can be precious. It doesn't matter. If you do things that are adorable, you make adorable faces or sounds, it doesn't matter how old you are. You're still cute. You're still adorable. I still want to pinch your cheeks like a freaking grandma. <laughs> So, like, I just don't get people who are like, oh, I'm an adult, I can't be cute. It's just, it's just a silly thing that I don't get, you know. <laughs> Anyways, that is all that I've got to talk about for this video, so hopefully you liked it, but if you didn't, that is perfectly okay and perfectly understandable, but hopefully I'll see you in the next video anyway, so until then, I hope your day is just as lovely as you are. So, bye. What do you call a snake that's exactly 3.14 meters long? A python. Eh? Eh? <laughs>